Everybody thinks, oh, I want to work in Bitcoin, but I'm not a developer. You don't have to be a developer. There could be a major bull run the next 18 months. What is better than a meaningful job that helps you contribute to the very thing that's going to fix the world? The Bitcoin job market still is very closely linked to the Bitcoin price. Many Bitcoiners get to a point where they don't want to just moonlight as a Bitcoiner and have a fiat day job, but they just want to move their whole life to Bitcoin. The Bitcoin Bitcoin space is still very small and most of the companies are startups. For regular people to get into Bitcoin, they need to see other regular people. CBDCs to me is the biggest threat to humanity. This is how they always get us, with convenience. Why should someone work in Bitcoin and build a career in, in Bitcoin? I don't know if anybody should, but many, many people really, really want to. And I mean, what is better than a meaningful job um, that helps you contribute to the very thing that's going to fix the world? I mean, that's what we all want, right? <laughs> So yeah, many, many Bitcoiners fall down the rabbit hole and there just comes a point where they want to contribute to Bitcoin in some shape or form. And there are many ways to do that. And some decide to work in Bitcoin and look for jobs with Bitcoin companies. So this is where I want to help and uh, serve the Bitcoin community. Yeah, not as a recruiter, uh, because I don't have a recruiting background and there are already skilled recruiters in in the ecosystem, but really as um, a guide or as a resource for the job seekers, uh, because recruiters mainly work for employers. And uh, I saw a niche because my background is in customer support, customer service. So I really am a service person. And I chose the job seekers in Bitcoin as my target group to serve and to, to contribute to the Bitcoin community. So with knowledge, with education, with connections, with an efficient job feed, um, with things that make their lives easier. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do at Bitvocation. Yeah. Interesting. What, what it was, uh, like, so you are acting more like as a um, resource for people that want to get a, a Bitcoin job. Uh, but maybe have struggles starting with that. What advice do you have for, for people that are right now like, oh, I have a good job, I feel comfortable, but actually I have a lot of Bitcoin and I want to actually also contribute to Bitcoin uh, in a meaningful way. What advice do you have uh, for, for them the seeking a Bitcoin job? Yeah, that was a lot of questions and there's a lot of advice for different <laughs> parts of that. Um, if you're in a comfortable job, like a fiat job and stability and security is important to you, then I would not advise you to work in Bitcoin. Because if you're looking for job security, Bitcoin is not the right place. Uh, because Bit the Bitcoin job market still is very closely linked to the Bitcoin price. So there are a lot more jobs in the bull market when prices are high and when teams simply have more money to hire people. And yeah, the opposite is the case in the bear market. Uh, there are a lot less jobs, teams have less money and the job market is more skewed towards developers. Uh, I think developers are sort of okay. <laughs> they will always find jobs also in the bear market. But all the non-dev jobs, um, there is a little bit of an up and down, which we can also, uh, which we hopefully will be able to see in our data that we are collecting in Bitvocation now. So, um, but there are many people who are sitting in fiat jobs and they are nice and stable, but maybe stability is not one of their values. Maybe freedom and uh, meaningful work is, um, I mean, that is um, also something that Bit that unites Bitcoiners, um, freedom, truth, privacy, transparency and everything. And so, yeah, many Bitcoiners get to a point where they don't want to just moonlight as a Bitcoiner and have a fiat day job, but they just want to move their whole life to Bitcoin and uh, be fully aligned with it. That happened to me. I assume that happened to you as well. I don't know what you did before, but I'm sure there's a reason why you decided to do a Bitcoin podcast and go full time. And um yeah, so people need to check what are their values, what do they need, um, because if you have a family to feed, then maybe just moving, quitting your fiat job and, and moving to Bitcoin might not be the best idea.
maybe then focus on being the Bitcoiner at your fiat job. Maybe you can be more useful there. But yeah, for other people, like for me, freedom um, is much more important than security. I will provide my security by holding Bitcoin and I'm used to the ups and downs um, of working in Bitcoin. So that's something really important to know for anybody who wants to make the switch. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's great. I, I mean, just quickly to my story, I uh, as I it's, it's been a while since I mentioned it on the podcast. Um, I actually was very satisfied with my job. I, I really liked it. Uh, I was uh, getting really good promotions. Uh, I loved the things that I did. I loved the environment. The only thing I didn't like was the content of it. It was cybersecurity, mm -hmm. which is an mm -hmm. amazing field. Like it's really exciting. There's a lot going on in cybersecurity. Uh, it's like one of the fastest growing uh, industries right now as, uh, as cyber, as internet security is more and more important uh, and privacy and all those things. Um, but Bitcoin was more exciting. <laughs> so I had the, <laughs> so I had the choice like, oh, I, do, do I want to make something exciting or do I want to have something that is the most exciting thing for me? And as I'm young and 25, I'm able to take a little bit of risks. And I was like, ah, oh, let's, let's jump into it. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still fine. I'm still living. <laughs> I'm still, yeah. I can still pay my bills. So, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's great that you can do it. But yeah, as you said, like circumstances are playing a big role. Like maybe you're not 25, maybe you're 45, maybe you're 50, maybe you have kids, maybe you have, uh, a wife, maybe you have a family that, uh, that you have to feed or they're relying on you. Maybe you have something else that, yeah, you, you, you have, Th then it's like, uh, harder to do the switch. I uh, also talked with Bitcoiners that are like 58 years old. They have a big income. They have like 300, 400,000 a year salary. And they're like, Oh, I would love to dedicate my life to Bitcoin, <laughs> but yeah. those salaries are not in Bi Bitcoin only companies. So it's really hard to switch. I mean, that's a luxury problem that they have, but, uh, still like there's a lot of circumstances where like, uh, maybe it's not the best. <laughs> and then we come to this interesting thing where, being a Bitcoiner in a non-Bitcoin company is really exciting because you can bring this orange light into a new environment. Like we should not all like grow in our, <laughs> go in our echo chambers and, and stay there. Like being a Bitcoin warrior, let's say it like that in the fiat company and, and say, and bringing the knowledge in the lunch breaks to, uh, about Bitcoin. I think that's a really, um, really good thing, uh, to do. Uh, um, and I'm so proud that there are now two free Bitcoiners in my old job that are now doing that instead of me, <laughs> even though I'm not yeah. there anymore because it was long enough there. And if we assume uh, that every company will be a Bitcoin company at some point, then the people who stayed and who are right now the Bitcoiners, they might set themselves up for really good positions at that point. Because where are their management teams going to go when they need advice uh, to the guy who's been talking and preaching about Bitcoin for five years or something? But um, you asked me for advice, but you can also give advice to, to people who want to make the jump because you did it. You changed, you quit your job and you started a Bitcoin business. So what would your advice be to, to people who want to do the same? I think it's really important. Uh, I mean, I think you talked actually about uh, about that in a in a recent podcast that I, I saw from from you. You have to show the proof of work. Like um, when you want to do uh, a Bitcoin job, first of all, you have to um, show that you can do that job. Like uh, if you want to be a developer, yeah, like it helps if you were a developer before. Uh, if you want to be in, in marketing, it helps that you did marketing before, but you can even, uh, do it yourself. Like, uh, I got so many connections just being active one year every day on Bitcoin Twitter. Like I started on 2023 with zero followers, or like not zero, like 200 followers or something like that. Uh, and grew my following till 10,000 followers in the Bitcoin community, not by some growth hacks. I just uh, was engaging with everyone and was sending out five tweets per day and was uh, building connections. I was Skyping, uh, not Skyping, I was Zooming uh, and Google meeting <laughs> with, <laughs> with the people uh, in the Bitcoin community and, and just searched out for, for network, searched out for, for those connections with, with Bitcoiners, which is amazing because I love talking with Bitcoiners, which 
then I kind of ended up talking uh, as a profession to other uh, mm. Bitcoiners. Uh, and at some point, uh, I got a check from Twitter and I was so surprised that I can actually make money from that. Like I was not mm. aiming to make money from that, but then I was like, oh, okay, Twitter sent me a check and I was like, that's that's maybe enough to, to buy me two days of food. So like, that's not a lot, um, but, but it, it, it gave me that little hope that I was like, Oh, there, there's money in social media. Then mm-hmm. I took my YouTube more serious. Uh, then I started the podcast to be really more serious. And like after a month, um, uh, I actually got my first sponsor and then I was like, okay, I have a sponsor. I have a small income. It's not something, it's not on the level that I was before, but it, it might be worth, like I, I had a full-time job next to it. So I can do, I make money from that, even though I don't do uh, it now uh, full-time. I only do it like 10 hours a week or something like that. What if I do it 50, 60 hours a week? Like what, what, what would the outcome then be? So my way is for those people who actually want to build a business, uh, and, and actually want to do something because you can build a business, uh, starting to build a business out, even though you still have a fear job, like you can start like five hours a week, uh, 10 hours a week, maybe even 20 hours a week. If you have a full-time job and you want to work 60 hours a week, um, then you can do it, but ca- show some proof of work, like give, give the reason that the, the the, the company wants to hire you because you are a name in, in Bitcoin or, uh, you have done some uh, ama- a proof of work. Like, for example, if you want to be hired as a developer, maybe just develop something in Bitcoin and then show those projects to the uh, things. Like, I think that's a that's a big thing uh, for, yeah. for people. I, but I'm not an expert for getting a job. I just I just made my own job <laughs> in Bitcoin. Yeah, and but you mentioned a couple of really important things. One is. Um, start safely while you are still in a job and you have an income and just, you know, put your feelers out, try some things, see if they work or not. And the other thing you mentioned is also, I mean, you chose to start a business, but I think even finding a job as an employee, it's a very entrepreneurial activity, uh, especially in especially in Bitcoin. I think the the personality of a bitcoiner is a very entrepreneurial personality because bitcoiners or like entrepreneurs i mean it's very normal you start a business you put put in the work and you don't reap any rewards yet it takes time to build a business before you reap the rewards before you have customers before you have sponsors or before you make money and that is, yeah, that's not an employee mindset. I think an employee mindset is like, okay, you get a job, you go to work every day, you get a, you get a salary at the end of the month, whether you did a good job or not. <laughs> that is not an, a, the Bitcoiner mindset. You know, the Bitcoiner mindset is the proof of work. We first have to put in the work before we can reap the rewards. You know, block reward only is received after proof of work. <laughs> So that is the the, the same thing, uh, the, the same approach that we have to take with finding work, whether it's a job or a business, clients or whatever. Do, do, so, do, do you think that the social media presence, even if you are aiming for a developer job or a non-marketing job, is, is something important as a proof of work that you are a Bitcoiner and interacting with the Bitcoin community? Your Bitcoin network is the other important ingredient next to proof of work. So on one hand, you have to show what you can do. On the other hand, you have to build your Bitcoin network made of humans in Bitcoin. So, and that depends. Um, For you, it was Twitter. Uh, For a developer, this might be somewhere else. Um, Maybe they hang out in a, right now, a Nostr, I would think. Uh, or maybe I don't know GitHub very well. <laughs> I don't know if there are communities um, or Discord. Or there are places where um, your target group or your community will hang out. You know, or like I I also am a part of women's networks. You know, so maybe we meet up in person, or we have at every conference we have like a women's brunch or something, or maybe there is like we have a Telegram group. So every person um, no matter in what job or niche you are you will find your 
your space on the internet or your um like i'm not very active on twitter or i'm trying like yesterday was get on nostra day on twitter <laughs> everybody was <laughs> posting their end pops so i'm like oh i should take this more seriously and hang out there more but social media has never really been my my thing it's a chore linkedin because i'm now in the world of careers and jobs Uh, makes more sense for me. So I would just say focus your energy and your efforts on the little pocket of the internet that makes sense to you. But not everybody has to be on all the social media. But you will find your people if you look for them. You will find where they are. Another thing that I think a lot of people mistake is like you don't have to be a developer to find a job. Um, yeah. maybe to, to give some context, um, what are the most common like jobs outside of, of being a developer? Because I feel like most people that were like, oh, I want to work in Bitcoin, but I, I don't want to code. And I'm like, yeah, but what are you doing at your fiat job? Because Bitcoin companies are also big companies and they also need yeah. marketing. They also need recruitments. They also need uh, all the things that normal companies do need. Exactly. Um, and I'm happy to say that we are now, since we are scraping all of these jobs, uh, we are starting to put um, reports together on all of uh, this data because it's really important because everybody thinks, oh, I want to work, work in Bitcoin, but I'm not a developer. You don't have to be a developer. But as I mentioned in the beginning, during a bear market, I think Most of the jobs are sort of developer related, um, but in a bull market that changes completely. So let me just see what we have here because we put a little bit together. So we have product managers, non-dev roles, product managers, um, sales development, graphic designers, uh, marketing, Bitcoin mining technicians. So that I think is a very specialized um, <laughs> mining facility job, uh, also a non-remote job, because that's the other thing that half of the jobs in Bitcoin, of course, are remote. Uh, accountants, operations jobs, sales and customer uh, support, of course. And especially customer support, I think, is a great uh, job to get in, uh, like community manager, customer support. But these jobs, I think we will see a lot more once the bull market really hit. And that is also where my so my background is in customer service. I have worked for uh, for wallets uh, and, and like projects in the space. And once the bull market hits and so many more people come into the space uh, and they all have questions, um, customer support tickets, uh, like everywhere at exchanges, at, at any service providers, they just go up 10 times in numbers and then they really need to hire um, staff. So I think we will see this. Anybody who is subscribed to the Bitvocation feed, I think this will skyrocket uh, in a few months in November, December, or maybe like just after things go up. Um, that will be very exciting. So we have been really looking at the data since the beginning of the year. And uh, yeah, once we have a whole year together, it will be really exciting to see the, the development into the bull market, uh, during the bull market, and then as it goes down again. Yeah. I think it would be a great uh, second part to the podcast, maybe like in a year or 18 months to, to see like a, a job report, how was the bull run? Because I feel like, Probably yeah. in the next like 12 to 18 months, there will be a bull run. No guarantees, but uh, if, if history is any indication and all the things that we are now building up to, there could be a major bull run in the next 18 months. So then uh, it would be really interesting how the, the, the job market did in the last 18 months. And then again, like one, two years later, maybe then compared to a, to a bear market. So it's really cool that uh, you're s uh, collecting the data and you're collecting since 2024 or earlier already? Um, well, we have been scraping. So I had the idea for Bitvocation at the Bitcoin Prague conference in 2023 uh, because I met so many people who talked to me, oh, I want to work in Bitcoin, but I'm not a developer or, <laughs> you know, or I want to volunteer, but I don't even know where to start. Or Like everybody was like, I... How do I get my foot in the door? Um, and I went to this conference specifically with the intention to figure out how I could serve the Bitcoin community. Because before I was working with beginners and 
um, yeah, who were not part of the community, who were outsiders. And um, and I'm of course also working in this industry, and but I also worked in the wider crypto space, and I decided in 2023, I only want to work in Bitcoin. I want to be just 100% Bitcoin only. So I was also in the position of how do I find a job in this industry? And yeah, I've been very lucky so far in my career. I never really had to look for jobs. They Maybe I knew how to network or my jobs always came from within my network. And so for the first time, I was like, okay, where where are the job boards? Where do you find this? And I noticed Looking for a job is a job in itself. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And I thought, why? Look, I'm German. Uh, efficiency is my middle name, I always say. So I was like, there must be an easier way. And all these jobs, they should come to me. I shouldn't have to look for them. And that's how I had the idea for like just scraping um, the internet for just Bitcoiner jobs and then putting them in a nice feed like on Telegram. And that's how this, uh, how the Bitvocation feed was born. I did not do this. I found someone um, who could, who could build this. And yeah, so then we started doing this at the end of last year. And then a few months in, I was like, we have a lot of data from scrape, from scraping all of these jobs. Um, and I haven't seen really like Bitcoin only job data out there. It's always a bit mixed with crypto if it exists at all. Um, so I thought, let's just, um, yeah, let's uh, start doing that. And then I also attracted some really smart people who joined my team. And uh, yeah, that's really fun to work with them. And, and they have ideas and they come up with things. So now I think from where are we now? End of August. So in September, we are planning to start publishing uh, the data that we have. And of course, it's not, this is the first year. So it's it will not be super, super accurate because of course, every month we add more companies to the scraper. So it might look like there are more jobs, but it's just because we are scraping more companies. Um, but yeah, it's it's a startup. So every <laughs> month we will do better and become more accurate. Uh, yeah, that that is really exciting to to be able to provide this also as another resource. Interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, how many jobs per company is uh, uh, is something that you can already uh, provide. Um, what what have you learned so far from from, from the data? Um, so the most basic things is that it's not just developer jobs. It's actually even now that we're not in a bull market, uh, it's sort of fifty fifty, which was really nice to see. Yeah, 50% uh, developer jobs, 50% non-dev jobs. Uh, also, how many jobs are remote versus non-remote? Um, so because Bitcoin is borderless and global and the jobs should be the same, ex except uh, like mining facilities or something. There are very few jobs that really require you to be on site, on location. There are a few companies um, that um, where I was surprised uh, because also I'm a digital nomad. I am used to working remotely, but yeah, there are still companies that prefer to have offices and have the team together, which is also important. But it's, yeah, I would say it, well, it's definitely over 50% remote jobs. Um, but in some cases, it's it's hard to tell for us from from scraping the data because there are also lots of hybrid jobs, like especially in the US, uh, jobs are remote, <clears throat> but you have to be within a certain time zone or in a certain state or something. So I think in Europe, this is a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, so there are, for everybody to know, there are many remote jobs and there are many non-dev jobs. So this is really what I want people to know. You don't have to be a developer. Also, uh, yeah, and that is something I think important to know for people. The Bitcoin space is still very small um, and most of the companies are startups. Yeah, many, many companies are maybe just one person or two developers who had an idea and who started tinkering, building something. Um, my guess, I don't really have uh really accurate data on this yet but i think maybe only five percent of the companies that exist are actually 
really active employers yeah who who hire a lot of like swan bitcoin or like profitable okay maybe also not the best example because they just fired <laughs> i think half of their staff <laughs> but they according to our data we can really see it like like every month they had between 15 and 25 new jobs and then in july august pff, it just stopped um and they are also like the biggest employers are uh, financial institutions and um, like centralized exchanges like Kraken, Coinbase, um, BitGo. And I'm often I'm thinking, should I include them or not? Because, of course, they are not Bitcoin only companies. On the other hand, they are like really essential parts of the ecosystem. So and since they have a lot of jobs and some people also just want to break into the industry, I decided for now, yeah, we should include them, but we will see it going forward. But also my first job in the industry was with the Exodus wallet, which is not a Bitcoin only wallet. It's a multi-currency wallet, but everybody gets paid in Bitcoin. It's fully remote. The owners are Bitcoiners, uh, even though they serve the wider uh, crypto space. Uh, to me, it's a Bitcoin uh, company, so I want to include them also. Plus, it's a great company to work for. They have many jobs and I want to bring job seekers, you know, vacancies <laughs> or options to get their foot in the door in the space. So, uh, yeah, so there are some companies that we include that are not strictly Bitcoin only, but they are really essential parts of the of the ecosystem. Do you have advice for people who have less skills? And I'm thinking of people that maybe just come up from school or they like really want to start their <laughs> career in, in Bitcoin, because I know a lot of big companies provide trainee programs and stuff like that, but that will be probably not as common in, in the Bitcoin scene as the companies are not as, as, as big and a startup cannot have the same trainee program when like uh, to another compared to another company has like maybe 5,000 or 10,000 employees already. Uh, is, is there something like that also in, in Bitcoin or is that less the case? I think. It's more about skills, um, like specific. It's not so much about job titles, but specific skills and passion for Bitcoin. So a passion for Bitcoin, yeah, well, you either have it or you don't. If you don't have it, you, you, you don't want to, why would you want to work in Bitcoin? <laughs> Uh, and skills, I think there are so many courses. Uh, I, I have a friend who just messaged me like a week ago. He completely fell into the rabbit hole. He's teaching himself everything related to Lightning Network right now. He found the courses with Nifty Ney. He's going to the Tokyo conference. He's going to take over. So there are uh, tons of ways to, to uh, acquire knowledge um, for free, I think, or also paid. Um, but I, I'm sure if even if you have no money, you will find ways to learn everything you need to know about Bitcoin, because also most content creators uh, are so happy to share their knowledge, you know, as part of their proof of work. And there's also so there's the Plan B network that is all about education. Then we have Mi, Mi Premier Bitcoin. Then there is this, uh, I think it's called Summer of Bitcoin in Switzerland, which is actually targeting students, uh, I believe, which is sort of, it's not an internship, but it's, I think it's a, like a summer camp or something where students who come from university or who are still studying really learn everything about Bitcoin. So there are many initiatives if if people just look for them, they can find them. I have seen also intern positions at some companies, um, but I think anyone can just acquire, if, if they know what they want, they will find a way to acquire the skills, um, especially if it's like technical skills online, uh, or there are hackathons, or, you know, there are tons of ways, especially for technical people. For the other people, like I had, a, like, for example, also me at Bitvocation, I'm offering uh, people to just use their skills and gain their proof of work in my team in Bitvocation. Because I noticed that um, while there are many open source projects where technical people like developers can just contribute uh, their, their code, their skills, 
I don't see uh, many opportunities for non-technical people. So I was like, okay, I cannot build Bitvocation alone and I would like to build Bitvocation according to the same principles as Bitcoin itself. Now, it's not going to be decentralized because it's my baby and I still want to be in charge of it. Um, but I would like to um, just distribute the ownership of the tasks as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, if there's anybody who has any skills that they want to use in a Bitcoin company, um, contact me. Like I had a video editor who I already lost because he actually found a job. I have a data guy right now. He's amazing. I have a business developer who is amazing. I have a web developer help uh, and my scraper telegram. It's I have an amazing team and I'm happy to add more people based on like social media. You and I just talked about it. I don't like social media. <laughs> if there's anybody who would love to show their social media skills uh, in a Bitcoin company, and, and put their first proof of work in Bitcoin on their CV or on LinkedIn, contact me. Um, if anybody has any ideas of skills that they want to show in the Bitcoin company, um, I'm happy to add more people to my team uh, temporarily. Uh, just It should be a win-win. So you lend me your skills for a couple of weeks or months, and then hopefully I can help you find a job, create a win-win through that. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. It's an interesting onboarding internship internship program that you offer it's an, an yeah. interesting concept because it, like yeah i don't want to call it an internship because uh i'm i'm not here to teach people skills um i want to give people the opportunity to to use their existing skills and get a testimonial and 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 get me and all our team to experience their skills and how great they are because then this way I know it because I have connections I have found tons of people jobs before and also they build their bitcoin network through the people who are already in bitvocation who will all move on hopefully to bitcoin companies so it's another way to build your proof of work and your bitcoin network at the same time i love it a really really cool um as uh, also the interesting topic because sometimes i get it's like oh decentralize your podcast and i do my best uh to make the podcasts more decentralized but of course it's it's just me so <laughs> i cannot be really decentralized but two things i do is first off 
all my content is free to take. Like if anyone wants to take my clips, they can use it for advertisement. They can commercially use it. They can use it for films and documentaries. I don't care. They don't have to credit me. They don't have to pay me. They don't have to do anything for that. If they credit me, I'm really grateful. If they pay me, I'm really grateful, but it's just an optional thing. Uh, so that way I, I, that's kind of the, the Satoshi spirit. You, you do something without taking something from it because I get paid for my sponsors. I get paid from YouTube. I get paid from X. So like I all already get paid for doing that. And if someone just yeah. wants to take the podcast out, clips out, whatever out, uh, they are, they are free to do that. Like I, I will not, uh, punish anyone, uh, for doing that in, in actually, uh, in the opposite, I think it's it advertisement, even for my podcast, if someone takes it out and, and posts it on social media, even if they don't credit me. Uh, so I never understood that whole, Oh, you, you should credit the original. No, you just put it out there, <laughs> at least for yeah. me. People might do it anyway. And it's so much hassle to go after them if you wanted to. So just allow them to do it. Uh, it's yeah, it's a better energy this way. Exactly. And it's so interesting because uh, sometimes like you, YouTube has a feature where you can see who stole your content. And then uh, I once in a week or once in a month, I look in there and like, oh, cool. There's a uh, account who used like 100% of the video or 50% of the video or 70% of the video. Yeah, like YouTube has really nice statistics to that. Mm -hmm. And just go in there and comment there. Hey, thank you for, for, uh, um, uh, taking my podcast. I'm, I'm really uh, glad, uh, glad, uh, grad, grateful that you, you liked it. So I'm, I'm really yeah. like, uh, oh, <laughs> and then sometimes I get those messages. Oh, I was like surprised that you messaged me, like, uh, and that you liked it that, that I used. And I'm like, yeah, of course, that's the, that's yeah. the spirit of Satoshi. And the other thing yeah. that, uh, uh, I wanted to mention is like, I try to give everyone a stage. I noticed that. Bitcoin podcast themes, especially the bigger ones, have like the, the same, I don't know, 50 people all over again. Like it's like a washing machine and they're, they're washing their guests uh, every half year or year. And I am now like eight, nine months in a podcast game. And uh, I have over 220 different guests already. Uh, and I want to have uh, this year over 300 different guests uh, on. And if you calculate that out over five years, uh, this will be 1,500 guests. And I really want to get on this trajectory where I have a lot of different minds in Bitcoin. Then it will be also like maybe broader, maybe just people in freedom and, and building stuff also. But as, as long as it gets Bitcoin only, um, so th this is my two, two cents for, for, for being a decentralized podcast with giving not only the big names a, a stage, but also the smaller ones and opening up, uh, the, I don't know how it's called, like copyright things, like, like just mm -hmm. take it uh, wherever you want to take it. Uh, and I'm happy to even assist you. Like if you want a podcast without the logo, like just hit me up and I will uh, send you the raw files. Like no, no worries about that. And I'm, yeah, looking really forward to the, what I can do with that. But I just wanted to throw, throw that in as, as you mentioned, really a decentralized yeah. company. Yeah. And it's really important because that's also something I noticed that it's always this, I mean, we all have our, gurus in the space that we love to hear and uh, it's nice if they keep reappearing on different podcasts but for regular people to get into bitcoin they need to see other regular people you know from not always the same celebrities uh, and especially i mean there are different niches where this is the case but one niche is also women in bitcoin so as women in bitcoin so when i checked your podcast i was like okay has he had any women and, and yes you have <laughs> there are others who have not and especially uh like women we need to see other women uh to think oh okay if there's a maybe that's for me if if, if this woman gets bitcoin maybe i can get bitcoin because most women think they will not understand uh, Bitcoin. And the same thing also in, in jobs, like women will only apply to any company, whether it's a Bitcoin company or not, if they see other women in the team. So that is also something that uh, I think companies, companies are not aware of, especially in the tech space, which is still male dominant or whatever the word is. <laughs> um, and yeah, women will always check the team page before they uh, apply for a job 
to see, do I fit in? Are these my people or is this just a bunch of men? You know, so it's also really important because I know many uh, teams, many employers, they want to have more women on the team. Um, but it means they also need to show uh, more women. So that's also maybe on the website, even if it's just AI pictures in the beginning, not for the team, we should not fake team members, but just any um, uh, pictures on the website. Uh, it's, if the company is completely made up of men, they may not think about this. Yeah, how they are, if they are actually uh, attracting women to even apply for jobs. I just uh, quickly scrolled through my content. I had uh, already 20 women on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just like quickly uh, um, um, counted. Uh, yeah, I never, never did it. I, I, may, I maybe um, I, I will do more, more uh, playlists uh, uh, on, uh, on my channel. I don't have right now playlists on my channel, but I, I want to do more playlists. Uh, and one playlist could be like women in Bitcoin. That would be a very easy one. Just like find all the women that yeah. have been on my podcast. And it's really interesting for me because um, I started to invite more and more women uh, and I'm searching for them. Like we uh, we had this thing with Efrat. You you, you heard the, the, the podcast with Efrat. And I don't know if you heard the whole thing because in the end we talked about also women in podcasting mm -hmm. and women uh, around that. And we, we talked about that. Uh, uh, effect of like she had the same thing when she had sailor on and i had sailor on a lot of male uh people were in my dms and in her dms hey can i also be on the podcast there was not one woman uh woman asking for that but like yeah. all the males like oh michael sailor was on I, I i also want to be on so this this uh effect is, is definitely there and also uh, i get the most rejections for podcast interviews from females i don't get a lot of rejections at all like uh, probably like mm -hmm. i don't know two percent of, of of the people that i write hey do you want to be on the podcast uh don't write me at all or uh, say no like there's a very small amount of people but i have um especially with, with women that haven't been on many podcasts maybe just on one or maybe haven't been on any podcast uh, mm -hmm. And with mail, it's different. Like I, I write them, they're like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, let's do it." <laughs> Even they, they have never been on a podcast, but they have this like, "Oh, yeah, let's let's do it anyways." But with Efrat, uh, if if you haven't uh, watched it, like it's a really interesting. I think they last like twenty, thirty minutes or something like that. Yeah, uh, started, uh, like I mentioned, it was a very heavy subject in the beginning, so I needed to take it a, a little bit easy. But I want to finish it. Yeah. Um, do Do you see yeah, something? Do, do you sorry. see the similar patterns in, in the job market? Uh, sorry, I just want to quickly ask, do, do these women give you a reason why they are not, why they don't want to come on the podcast? Is yeah, it it's, it's, it's usually, it's usually the same uh, reason. Uh, I, I sometimes hear it also from men, but very, very, uh, not a lot. Like why me? Like I, I'm not interesting. Like, um, like, uh, I, I don't have a specialized opinion. I, I, I'm yeah. not a uh, technical savvy in, in Bitcoin. And all. Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it, it's like, I have to convince them that I found them interesting. That's why I write them. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but I have this sometimes also with men, but very, very, very uncommon with, with men. So that's, it's an yeah. interesting. And, and that's why I was curious if, if you see the same pattern with, with shop appliance. Yes. So two things. First of all, that's the answer I expected, um, because women are a lot less confident in, yeah, I think in a male tech environment or maybe in general, like I am saying this because I was the same. I was always like, what do I have? Who would want to listen to me? And what do I have to say? Whatever. I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert on Bitcoin, you know, but I just, so two things. First of all, I love talking with Bitcoiners about Bitcoin. That's what we all want. So we already have a good basis for a conversation on any Bitcoin podcast. Um, and secondly, yeah, um, since I have uh, worked with so many women, also educated them about Bitcoin, onboarded them to Bitcoin, um, I know that their fears and their doubts and and the lack of confidence when it comes to money, when it comes to tech, uh, when it comes to being seen, going on stage, or talking on the podcast, talking on the stage. I just spoke in June at my very first conference. Yeah, I've been in Bitcoin for eight years or something. And 
so men, I mean, I don't like to generalize men are like this, women are, we don't know. In the general experience, men are just more confident and they, they maybe think of themselves quicker as experts than women. <laughs> and unless women really are 150% sure that they really know every single detail about the subject, uh, they will not speak up or, or be seen or whatever. I do think, or I, I do know based on studies that this is also uh, relevant in the job market. Uh, a woman will um, uh, apply to a job if she thinks that she knows every, every single requirement that she can fulfill this and men, well, if they know 60% or something, I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, men just see this differently. And so there is a relation, but yeah, especially in Bitcoin with the women in Bitcoin, one reason why I'm appearing on more podcasts. Yeah. One reason is I need to promote Bitvocation, of course, but the other one is I want to be seen by women. I want to get more women into the space. I don't want them to miss out on this, on the biggest financial revolution of our lives. I don't want them to yeah, be left behind. I don't want them to end up in slavery. I want them to have to understand savings technology. Um, and they will only be motivated to do this. Well, one, if they have a problem that Bitcoin can solve, but two, if they see other people like them, which is women in this case. Uh, so we all need to see other people who are like us publicly uh, so that we can think, oh, if, if they understand it, or if they believe in it, then maybe it's something for me too. So yeah, one the main reason for me to be more public is for all the other women out there so that they can see more women uh, online speaking about Bitcoin or working in Bitcoin. Mm, yeah. And I noticed that actually because uh, I, in the starting, I think like the first like 20, 30 episodes was like no women um, because like I just wrote random people and, and who comes on a, on a, on a, in a non-existing podcast, but then slowly it started. And I think the, the frequency is, is a little better now. Uh, and I started out with like three, four, five percent of women. And now I'm approaching like 10 and 11 percent. I know that Natalie Prunell, which is, I think, the biggest female podcaster uh, in the scene. Um, yeah, she, she probably is by a wide, uh, a wide margin even. Um, and she posted, I think a few months ago that she has 20% female audience. So even a, a female host, uh, of a Bitcoin podcast only has 20%. So that's like kind of my benchmark. Like if I can get to 20%, I'm really doing good. <laughs> if a female host yeah. can get there, uh, then then a the male host, that would be amazing. But I'm yeah. pretty satisfied now with my 10%, half of the it's ones that good. has a... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the, the women are also just not there, where are you going to find them? So, but it's, <laughs> it's good uh, that you're reaching out uh, and that you're inviting them because, yeah, that is another thing. This is actually something I experienced... <laughs> Women and men are just different. Uh, at that conference that I was speaking, there was also a podcaster or YouTuber um, who, like, he for the whole weekend, he was interviewing one person after the other, of the other speakers. And, and there were two women, myself and another woman, and we were the only two who were not interviewed. So I was like, how... And I spoke to one of the other guys. I was like, how how does this work? How does he select his his um, interview guest? And he said, I don't know. I just went and said, let's have a chat. <laughs> and, uh, and I went to the other woman. Did you get invited to an interview? No, I didn't get invited. <laughs> so we were waiting to be invited. And, or, and we thought, oh, this guy only speaks to men. I also checked his YouTube channel. He only speaks to men. Uh, Maybe not on purpose. Maybe there's just a communication, a misunderstanding. So yeah, note to self, invite myself, <laughs> talk to people, uh, all, and all the other women. We just, yeah, and, and also note to all the men or male podcasters, invite the women, you know, or if you're interested in, in certain women speakers. I mean, I'm also not like, oh, you know, People should be invited just because they are women. No, they should also be interesting guests or have something to share. But yeah, there seems to be a mismatch. 
there's some other interesting statistic that I can share from my podcast. Um, I, I think around, I invite around like 60, 70% of my guests, uh, and the rest is either coming from themselves. They like, Hey, I want to be interviewed or they are coming through another guest. Like another guest yeah. is actually more common these days. Like a, a guest is saying, like, Hey, Robin, you should also have him on or Hey, Robin, uh, he would be a great fit. Um, and interestingly enough, all the women that were on my podcast, I invited. It was not one woman showing up and saying like, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. Yeah. But on the other side, males, like even with big followings, like even way bigger names than me that are on stage on Bitcoin Prague, that are on stage on Nashville, they are coming to me and saying like, Hey, I have this new book. I want to be speaking on your podcast mm -hmm. on this, on this book, like, uh, which I really love because it shows that they have like absolutely, um, like th th they are willing uh, to go on, on podcasts that are smaller. Like this was, uh, and then they, they, they're like, Oh no, I'm this big one. I should be invited and stuff like that. They write me themselves. So this is really cool. But I, I, I just saw that till now, not one woman wrote me like, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. Yeah. Uh, and I just noticed that last time when I spoke with Efrat, like I and was never aware of that fact actually. Uh, so it's it's interesting for me that like men like oh I want to be in the in the podcast and more the more the hunters uh, and less yeah. of like oh like I I should be invited at least. Yeah, very interesting. So that's also an invitation for me to just reach out to more podcasters. Yeah, Not definitely. If, if, <laughs> yeah. If, 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 if you want to be on podcasts, like I've, I can only speak for myself. I don't know how the other hosts are doing it. I, I should, uh, uh, check out with them <laughs> if, if they have some tips for me also, but I, um, evaluate everyone the same way. I'm like, okay, is, is, is there some interesting topic for me? Like, uh, also for you, um, um, I forgot his name. Someone, uh, brought you up and said like, Hey, you should be on, uh, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. And he said like, Hey, you should have her on. Uh, and I was like, Oh, I will check her out. And like five minutes later, I, I wrote you and he was like, Oh, shit, you, you're, you're fast. And I'm like, yeah, if, if I see a profile and I see a topic, like I have to make a podcast interesting. If there's mm. nothing, then it's really hard for me to invite, invite someone. But I yeah. saw some, an interesting profile. I saw an interesting person. I was like, ah, oh, let's invite her. That, that's like a decision I make in like one minute. And it does not matter if a guest brings it up. I see you in the feed or you write me myself. So like I make no uh, difference here. And so like, I, if, if someone writes me and they're interesting, like, yeah, maybe I also an invitation to every one uh, of my viewers. If they, f they think they have an interesting story and they want to share something on the podcast, like just reach out, like, uh, I, I respond to everyone, uh, and the yeah. worst thing that can happen that you will not be on the podcast. And if you don't ask, guess what? You will also not be on the podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that's uh, learning. And also, now the good thing about women is we are all we have a tight network, and we, especially in Bitcoin, it's such a supportive community of women. I mean, everybody is supportive, also the men. I think Bitcoin is just amazing, a uh, supportive community. But after our podcast, I will reach out to all the interesting Bitcoin women I know and tell them about this, first of all, that they can contact you. Um, but any podcaster that they should should more courageous and say, hey, interview me. <laughs> I have something interesting to talk about, uh, but especially yours. Yeah. Since I know now that you are interested. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, please, please do that. Um, one thing that back to the, to the <laughs> Bitcoin job <laughs> uh, market topic, um, you said like, if, if you're not passionate about Bitcoin, why should you work in Bitcoin? Which, which brought the, the uh, thought in my head, like, there, there might be some negative things in, in working for Bitcoin. You mentioned already two things where like the link to the price and the job security. Um, mm -hmm. what challenges or what, what negative sides are there to, to working in Bitcoin? And obviously, if you are passionate about Bitcoin, they probably don't matter, but, uh, is there something that you're like, Oh, you should be aware of that before you actually enter a, a Bitcoin job? Well, the one thing I mentioned is the job security. That's just not there yet. We, we've just seen even big uh, established companies like uh, Swan just let go half of their staff. 
Uh, so there's always something that can happen uh, because it's just a very new and volatile industry. I think to me, that would be the only thing. But there is also still fears uh, that you might become a target, I noticed. And I have to admit that this is completely not on my mind anymore. Um, many of us, we will die on this hill. I have adopted this mm -hmm few years ago, this mindset, but I actually noticed because we have a Bitcoin walk here. So it's not about working in Bitcoin, but uh, you know, the Bitcoin walks uh, that um, Jacob started. We have one here in Bulgaria in Bansko, where I spend a lot of time. And uh, we have quite a big group now, but I there is one Bitcoiner that I know lives here. And she was like, why would I join this this walk and make myself a target? You know, like if, if people know that, I mean, I don't want people to know that I'm in Bitcoin. And yeah, I was surprised that some people still think like this. Um, but maybe it also depends where you, I mean, in Bulgaria, yeah, nobody cares. But maybe there are areas or, or like countries in the world where it's just, yeah, where it's dangerous, where you shouldn't um, be public about um, being a Bitcoiner or working in Bitcoin. But I think those are very few now so personally yeah i'm not uh, worried about anything like that so the only risk really is that you uh, might suddenly lose your job um, when the, when the team runs out of money and that's just something you need to be prepared for but if you're a good bitcoiner with a long time horizon and you manage your bitcoin well then you can take care of your own security very true very beautiful um and what is the 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 positive side of it like how different is 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 a bitcoin job to do to, to a fiat job in, in in general is there like a different vibe or or is it just Uh, depending on who's employing you, like it's, it's probably like uh, a job at Kraken or something like that will be maybe even the, kind of the same or how do you see it? Um, I think uh, uh, companies like Kraken are really, they, they are run in a very similar way to corporate uh, fiat companies because they are actually fiat companies. They have to uh, submit to the same like compliance and legal uh, stuff as any other company. But I think, yeah, 95% of uh, companies in Bitcoin are startups, uh, are just very small companies that are, that have been started by Bitcoiners by, yeah, like I said, often maybe it's just a couple of developers who had an idea. And then, of course, they started growing. Yeah, Bitcoiners want to work with other Bitcoiners. So I think it's um, very community based. Bitcoin companies also hire from within their community. I don't know if you are in any of that's actually a little insider tip that I can give to people looking for jobs. Every startup has a. Um, a Discord or a, a beta tester group, a Telegram or something where they hang out with their very first users. Like in my case, for example, was the Fountain app, the Fountain podcast app. I'm sure you know it. Um, they were three people when they first started. Um, and uh, of course, they want to be in touch with their users. Yeah. So they had a little bit, a little beta tester group. I think we were 30 people at the beginning. Um, and that already feels like being part of the project, being part of the company. Yeah. And then when they do uh, grow and when they do hire people, where will they look for them? Of course, in their closest community, which is their beta tester group or like also Relay. They have the squad, the Relay squad, um, which is ambassadors, um, which is, I guess, also better beta tester a little bit so every so i would recommend everybody to find a project that they really love like for me it was a fountain app like two or three years ago and just join them um because that will already feel like well not like working in bitcoin but by like contributing and being part of something And uh, you basically, you get to hang out with the CEO of a company. In which other industry can you do that? <laughs> so I was hanging out with Oscar and Nick back then from the Fountain app in this group. And then at some point they were looking for help with customer support. 
I raised my hand and that's how I, I got the job. I worked for them for, for less than a year, but to set up customer support and everything. So this is what it's like to work in Bitcoin. You, It's like con concentric circles. Is that the word? I hope I'm not saying this wrong. But you start on the outside and you get closer and closer into the community until you end up working in a Bitcoin community. So yeah, that's my biggest tip. Uh, find a project that you love. Join their inner circle, their beta tester group. Start helping, start contributing. Um, and uh, yeah, and network in, in these communities and uh, you might end up with a job sooner or later. Well, you, you mentioned also before that the Bitcoin community is such a supportive one and, and I 100% attest to that. Like, it's, it's really cool how, how supportive they are. Um, why, why do you think Bitcoin community is such a strong one? Why, the, the, why is the, the commitment to each other, helping each other uh, such, such a big one? Well, I think we are all united by um, the desire to make Bitcoin successful. You know, um, whatever our reasons are, like my initial reason to, to get into Bitcoin was to uh, fix my my future, my pension plan in the future, <laughs> because I noticed that all the things that I had put in place as a res responsible German were just not working and I will not have a pension, even the one that I paid in voluntarily, whatever. So that is how I noticed I have to become an investor. And then I heard about Bitcoin. I was like, oh, Bitcoin is the fastest vehicle for me to, to get there. So that was my initial uh, reason to study it. But then I learned about all the, the freedom, the decentralization, the self sovereignty, like the transparency, the privacy, like all the things, the human rights, <laughs> the, the things, all the things that Bitcoin uh, can fix and help contribute. So I, my highest value in life is freedom and truth. And those are the, like the two things that I found in Bitcoin. So this is why I want Bitcoin to succeed. And yeah, to take care of me when I'm old uh, financially. But everybody might have, depending on where they live, depending on their life circumstances, they might have different reasons why Bitcoin is important to them. But what unites us all is that we want Bitcoin to succeed because we understand it's the only way for us to stay free in a digital world. It's either, I always say it's either savings technology or slavings technology or i don't know if that's a proper english word or enslavings technology <laughs> but we are at this crossroad right now where we have to pick a side and and all the people who pick bitcoin we all have a common goal and i think that's why why it's also exciting to be at the forefront of such a new technology and and have to have such a big vision for for fixing the world is is the, the the decision that you're also talking about like between slavery and bitcoin kind of like the the, the bitcoin route and maybe the cbc route that we, we might go through uh, do, yeah. do you see that also like maybe is even a risk to the bitcoin with cbdc's i don't know if it's a risk to bitcoin but it's a risk to humanity i mean cbdc's to me is the biggest threat to humanity right now Ex apart from war and all the other bad things uh, but to, it is the biggest threat to to personal freedom like i cannot when i think about cbdc's honestly i yeah if i weren't already in bitcoin <laughs> uh, i want to invest all my energy in bitcoin in having an alternative that keeps humanity free in a digital world and the world is digital it will become more and more digital and i just don't see any other alternative except for bitcoin right now so that's what i'm putting my energy in i actually see even cbdc's as an advertisement for for bitcoin long term like if really governments really push that uh they are pushing basically basically digital wallets uh and and having only digital money and then i think citizens will be like oh there's like this digital euro this digital uh us dollar um and then there's this digital bitcoin thing so they're warming the the society up to digital money and then the jump to bitcoin is like oh yeah like your digital euro i cannot spend on on weekends 
oh, I can only spend to this al- uh, am- amount and there's limits to it. Oh, uh, yeah, the, I heard my my uncle there got his ha- account frozen because there was some uh, some weird thing. This all doesn't happen with Bitcoin. And I think it could act like CBDCs could be a tr- Trojan horse for Bitcoin. And that's that's an interesting thought that I, that I had with like Bitcoin. Bitcoin could actually benefit a lot of governments pushing CBDC. Yeah, um, I I agree. And I also have similar hopes because I'm like, who is building these CBDCs? They are smart people. And I, my hope is that these people build backdoors or something like these people are Bitcoiners. <laughs> that um, make it look on the outside like they're building whatever the government wants but in the but ultimately they build what humanity needs yeah and, and so i'm also a very spiritual person i uh, listen to a lot of spiritual teachers and astrologers whatever i don't base my investment decisions on it but um I have hope for humanity. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, this will not happen. Uh, people are waking up more and more. And yes, it might be very convenient. And, and uh, this is how it, how they always get us with convenience. You know, oh, you don't need to use dirty cash anymore. And this is much faster, whatever. But people will wake up. Um, plus, it's the opposite of progress. Uh, it's a deterioration of money because it will be CBDCs will is not be is not fungible money. You know, a dollar or euro will not be a euro anymore if each euro has a different expiry date. Or you cannot you cannot like you said spend this euro on the weekends or or for this course, or this is only valid for three months and this one is valid for 20 years or what. This is like the opposite of of what money should be. So it's like a regression um, while Bitcoin has all the all the uh, characteristics of sound money. So yeah, I don't think humanity will go in a direction where, in the opposite of progress. I just can't imagine that. But let's see. I, I hope so too. I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future. And I just hope that uh, people can see through that uh, what CBDCs really are and see through that what Bitcoin really is and then decide uh, the, the 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 best they can. And yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful person in general, really positive always. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of like CBDCs might be uh, like Blu-rays, uh, where a lot of people are like, oh, Blu-ray technology is great. And then like, oh, we jump to digital things. So <laughs> mm. I hope the CBDCs are like Blu-rays where like everyone is like, oh yeah, digital, digital, digital. And, uh, it's, it's no, no, it's Bitcoin, not, not digital euro. Yeah. I, at least yeah. that's, that, that, that's my hope to it. I'm really cool. That there's like a lot of other topics that I want to go through, but there's already our, our time over one hour. Uh, so let's start with the end routine of the podcasts where I ask two questions. The first question is always the same question for every guest. And the question is, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Oh, wow. Wow. I wish I would have prepared for this. I notice now that I have not finished the podcasts that I looked, uh, that I watched. <laughs> Honestly, I think the most important thing with everything I do is I just want to be a good person. I want to be a kind person. And uh, this is something that I, as I mentioned, find really in Bitcoin, in this supportive community. And whether you're looking for a job or for uh, building a business or being successful in any way, it is much easier if you are a likable, kind person that serves other people. Um, and if we all do that, then uh, yeah, we can all help each other to succeed. And that's beautiful, really cool. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, now the the other end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Um, and your mm-hmm. question from the previous guest is. Who was the last person you orange pilled in real life, and how did you do that? I don't really believe in orange pilling. Uh, <laughs> I will talk to Bitcoin about any uh, with anybody who comes to me and wants to know about it, and I will happily share everything. But I've stopped 
pushing my knowledge or my passion on people. Yeah, in the very beginning, I would send people sats and help them install wallets. And then, yeah, a year or so later, they would not remember where their wallets are. And the, I just wasted all my precious sats. <laughs> so, yeah, and we all, I mean, for us, it's Bitcoin, but maybe we have friends who keep talking to us about keto and about this and that. And maybe we are not ready to hear that un until we have a problem that we're trying to solve. So I believe that anybody is only motivated to learn about Bitcoin once they have a problem that Bitcoin can solve. That is the moment when they are open, when they are teachable, coachable, um, and ready to hear about it. But until then, we will just get on our friends' nerves. Uh, so I am not orange pilling anybody. No. Nice. Uh, I think that's. I think it's actually a good approach because if you wait then to for Bitcoin to come uh, for for uh, people to come to you, uh, and it's it's a way better approach. And I also do that since uh, two three years now, and it's. Uh, feels way better and, and they actually learn something and they actually make progress because you don't push it down the throat. They actually want to learn it from you. So like that, that's a, it's a big shift. Yeah. Um, yeah, really cool. Thank you so much, uh, Anya for being on. Thank you so much for, for being part of the show. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? Yeah, so I think the best, uh, so we have a website. I say we, because I have a team now, uh, bitvocation.com is uh, the website right now it links to a sub stack uh, but i hope to have a proper website soon and i think the best uh, place is, is telegram bit vocation feed for anybody who's looking for a job um, there are daily updates all the jobs we're scraping so that's the best address and i also post every now and then uh, in the channel with news thank you so much for joining us today also thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another piece, another episode. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robin.